Okay. And Curtis suggested when we did our leads this morning during the 6 o'clock hour that there's some sort of conspiracy afoot and that there are some that are speaking very positively about Drake May and maybe at the at the behest of Gerard Mayo. Well, do, do you think it's interesting that it's been open season all week from players, coaches, and people around the team that Drake May looks great? Do you think that do, we would be hearing yeah. this if Jacoby Brissett had just beaten the Jets? No, mm. no. So, no. I, of course, it's not conspiratorial to say that this is a change in a method by the organization. Yeah. And I don't think Demarcus Covington's going to say anything without the tacit approval of Gerard Mayo. And I'll take Curtis cause Curtis's conspiracy even deeper down the wormhole. Who's speaking highly of Drake May? Which coaches? The defensive. Defensive coaches. Defensive coaches. Yeah. All the so. coaches that it looked like Gerard Mayo had the ability to hire. Ding, ding. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't that's think – I mean, that's – I mean, Alex Van Pelt was not a Gerard Mayo hire. Where's the res, Where's the receivers coach? Where's the O-line coach? Right. Where's the running backs coach saying, you know what, that – that tr that throw that Drake May made to so and so down the sideline, I'd never seen a throw like that before. You notice that it's all the defensive guys, yeah. and in the world that I view this team from, those were the guys Mayo got to hire. It's a good point because he had yeah. he had relationships with the majority of the defensive guys prior, offensive relationship prior to him becoming head coach. He had no relationship with none yeah. of those guys. Right. That's my point. I, uh, Gerard, uh, Alex Van Pelt is not going to be here, I don't think, in two to three years. He had the relationship with Jacoby Brissett. He benefits mm -hmm. from Jacoby Brissett looking yep. manageable in this office, offense. That's who benefits from it is and Alex the, Van Pelt. And what's yeah. the most important stat to Alex Van Pelt through three games? Zero no interceptions. Zero interceptions, yep. yes. And yes. you bring in Drake May, and then you know what? If Drake May looks good, but the offense is struggling, they're not going to trade Drake May. They're going to get rid of the coordinator. Shyam, we we should finally get to a portion of they said it in the form of what Rob Ninkovich said, which proves he is not on Team Wiggenshyam, uh in a minute. This is Lewis. Oh, Lewis. Oh, Lewis has us on hold. I don't know why people do that. Right. Lewis Thanks, is sir. actually. Well, it Lewis, says he's French and they're a holes. He's a French guy. And so, clearly on Team Michelin. Um, but Rob Ninkovich, here's what he says about Drake May starting. All the commentary right now, Billy O, Skarnakia, Tom. You know, I'm thinking of the last three guys that I've heard ask about who should be the starter. They all say Jacoby. You, don't, you have a fourth string tackle out there. Do you know if... This is the mentality. Is it even a fourth string? <laughs> this is the mentality of a pass rusher. You look out there and you see a non-starter. Yeah. It's a turnstile. It's, hey, I'm walking to the subway and you got that thing. It's just, <laughs> who's going to get paid? You're yeah. just trying to get like four sacks on the guy. So my question here is, what do they do, do offensively if you can't drop back without hitting your back foot and getting smashed by a defensive end? You chip or you keep the tight end over there to help with the tackle who could be a turnstile. And, Ninko, I would say this. Billy O on this show said you play the number three guy. You play the number three guy. He sort of did. He did. I feel like Ninkovich has heard him, though, and feels like... I don't know. Maybe he heard him somewhere else. Selective I, hearing. I, yeah. I, Unless I, he I, heard him on. Wasn't he on he, Jules' podcast? Yeah, but did they... I don't know if they tied and listened to I don't know. Thing. But I... But, I don't know. I, 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 so Ninkovich is going with the he's going to get killed right. re reason and for, not, for not starting Drake May. And what did I say? Give me another logical, right? What was the other word I used? I wrote it down. Reasonable. Reasonable. Reason why. Reason why, other than he's going to get killed, that you can use. And it's easy to chip or help out. If you watch the Dallas game last night, you know. A lot of time they were helping chipping their way out on with Micah uh, Parsons. Other than that, why I would say Rob, what are the reasons other than him getting killed? Would you say don't play him? 
that you could that you could get me to be like, all right, I get what you're saying. I'm I'll ride with you on that one. But as of right now, that's all anybody says. Oh, he's gonna get killed. I mean, gonna... you know what Jacoby Brissett is, so devil's advocate right. is he if you have a porous offensive line, is Jacoby Brissett better because of experience? No. Is he more able to get the ball out if it needs if the ball needs to get out is he better is he gonna be he's better, the worst he holds better... on to the ball forever so if anything he's a sacrificial lamb back there if he's gonna get killed then what do you do then you don't play drake may no you're gonna but so that's if, why there's no reason to hold him right now right so you can't say well if jacoby Brissett happens to get hurt which you know every time he gets hit it looks like he's kind of wincing a little bit or he's down on the ground like maybe this is something that you know you never want to see guys get hurt, but if he does, are you putting Drake May in, or are you still saying, "Well, we're scared of the O line"? Well, no, I think uh, watching the Jets game, it answered your question right. since they put him in already. Mm -hmm. Here's a text for you, five zero eight text. Here are the reasons, Wiggy, mm -hmm. Bryce Young, Sam Darnold, David Carr, Zach Wilson. So what is? Oh, I want to go. Zach fine. Wilson wasn't ruined. He was just always bad. Yeah. Bryce Young wasn't ruined. He was. He's five. He was a, a statistical anomaly in the first place. He was five ten, like one hundred and eighty pounds, soaking wet, playing quarterback. Uh, David Carr was in like the early two thousands, drafted to an expansion team, by the way. And then Sam Darnold. Uh, I don't know. He's pretty good in Minnesota right now. Can I have a rebuttal, Your Honor? Mm -hmm. C.J. Stroud, Matt Ryan, Matthew Stafford. To that texter. All pretty good right away. All, all played as rookies. So every guy you tell me. Would you that, in include like the development that you see when it comes to Jaden Daniels? Yeah, I mean, the jury's still out on him, but. We, we all agree outside of Shime that if Josh McDaniels didn't leave and go to the Raiders, that Mac Jones would have built off of his rookie year. Yes. Oh, I got another one for you. You guys are going to love this one. Josh Allen. Played as a rookie. Ooh. But he's somebody who played as a rookie. Ooh. It ruined him. Ooh. Why so, Why do people backtrack? Like, he made a point, Josh Allen that is, about Steph Diggs not being there mm -hmm. without saying his name, saying that it's nice to have a set of receivers. Everybody that, eats. That is not concerned about their own stats. And then everybody loses their mind when it's like, that's, Steph Diggs is hardly alone in that. I mean, every receiver in the NFL is obsessed with their stats. Yeah, I mean, so like, it, yeah. and then he backtracks. It's like, of course, that's what you were talking about. Why do people not just say that's what I meant? 